We're going to work on the modeling of this temperature control lab. You can see it here that it has two heaters and two temperature sensors. The two temperature sensors are the little thermistors that are right here at the base of the heater. Let me just see if I can give a little bit better view of that. Okay, and they also have some thermal epoxy that glues them to the transistor heaters that are attached to this heat sink right in the back. Okay, so we're going to work on modeling this. We have, uh, you know, these are about four grams each. And in a previous modeling exercise, we worked on uh, just a single heater model. But this is going to be different. We're going to do, uh, you know, we're going to model both heaters and the, both temperature uh, responses. And then we'll set this up and try to see a, uh, you know, how our model compares to the simulation. Okay, so let's get into the modeling just a little bit. When we have two heaters, uh, we have uh, you know this setup right here, where uh, we have our temperature sensor, okay, temp two temperature sensors, and then here is our heater, our transistor heater. That's also the actuator for our controller, okay. And then we also have these heat sinks that just fit right around the uh, the heater. Uh, and help with some of the heat transfer. Okay, and a little LED light off to the side just to indicate when it's hot. Okay, and here's some here's some quantities for our energy balance that we're going to set up. We just have an initial temperature. You may need to update that if you have a different ambient temperature. Uh, your room is at a different uh, temperature. The heater output. Uh, we're just going to assume right now zero to one watt. And we're going to use a, a heater factor here so that we can have the heater between 0 and 100%. Now the second heater, we made it on purpose less, uh, less powerful. So it has about uh, 3 quarters of the heat dissipation of heater 1. And then we just assumed a heat capacity for steel. Uh, that was just for the, uh, you know, the transistor and the heat sink. Okay, and then we also have, in this case, we have, uh, we need to break up the area, okay? So instead of 12 centimeters squared that we had before, for the total for the single heater, we're going to have two heaters. I'll just draw these kind of as, uh, as boxes. And so we have the area right here that's going to be not between the heaters. And that's going to be, um, that's going to be 10. Okay, 10 centimeters squared. And then the area that's right in between the two, that's going to be equal to 2 centimeters squared. Okay, and so we have, um, we kind of have to break up the, uh, you know, the amount of area uh, that's between the two heaters or not between the two heaters. And then we have the mass and the overall heat transfer coefficient. Later on, we're going to be estimating these uh, and try to fit it, uh, but that'll be the next lab exercise when we do the estimation. So right now, it's just pure, uh, you know, predictions. We're not trying to, uh, we're in this case, we're not trying to fit the parameters. Okay, so we have the, uh, we want to have a dynamic model between the two. So we have our two energy balances uh, right here. Now this is uh, what we saw, you know, before is right here, okay? And then we had, have some, and also this term for the heater. Now we have some extra terms now. This is the heat transfer between the two. And you have the negative sign of those down below because the heat transfer between the two is going to be equal and opposite, okay, when you include it in the equation. So, so this is for heater uh, one right here, and this is going to be for heater two. And uh, we have, uh, we want to be able to implement these in MATLAB and Python or Simulink, and then be able to simulate these. Okay, so uh, this is our uh, dual heater model. Um, and then what we can do is I'm just going to take you to the website for this. Okay, so if you just start off with uh, apmonitor.com slash heat.htm, you know, the address that you see uh, right here on your device, if you just start with that and then select the, uh, the dual heater model, let's see if I can get uh, a better focus on that. Okay. 
Um, if you just start with that address and then uh, go to the dual heater model, then you'll see the source code. Okay, the source code for this, and you'll see it in Python, MATLAB, and Gecko. Gecko is a, also a Python uh, package. And the main thing that we want to uh, take a look at is this uh, definition of the energy balance model. Okay, so that's what we need in order to be able to integrate it. And so you have to implement those two differential equations, and we're going to solve those simultaneously. Okay, and then we also have, um, let me go down to the next one. You have some MATLAB code as well, very similar. Uh, but we need to define this, uh, this function in a separate, uh, separate file. We'll call that heat2, for example. Uh, and define this function so that it returns the derivatives of those two energy balances. And so you can see those uh, there as well. Uh, you can, uh, if you need to get the code, you can come down here to the right, and then that will help you uh, get the code and copy it over without the formatting. Okay, I'm going to come back up. And then there's also the Gecko source code. Now this is a uh, more native Python way of doing the modeling, and it allows us to do optimization later as well. But I just want to highlight the two equations, the two energy balance equations that are written there in Python. Okay, and then we're going to uh, solve it. Okay, so if you want to just solve it without the temperature control lab, you can use any one of these uh, three right there to do it with Python ODE int, MATLAB ODE45 or 15S or 23, you know, whichever integrator you want to use in MATLAB. Uh, you know, just select those and you'll get the source code. Uh, the other thing that uh, we're going to do now is is set it up and have it solve. Um, you know, in this case, you have uh, you know Python, MATLAB, or um, you have the uh, Simulink. Okay, so this is going to help us evaluate our model. And the thing that we want to uh, pay attention to is this cumulative error. So how much it deviates from the predicted values, and it's just going to accumulate that. It's going to integrate the difference between the two. So the slope is kind of like how much I'm off each time. Uh, and you can see the temperature 2 and the temperature, uh, you know, is, is tracking very accurately, but temperature 1 looks like it, it isn't tracking as well. Okay, so I'm going to get the source code for that, but let me just set this up. <coughs> I'll show you how to set this up uh, with the temperature control lab. Uh, here's our power supply right here. We're going to plug this in um, right here. Okay. <clears throat> you don't want to plug it into this one. This is power to the Arduino board. We're going to take care of that with the USB connection uh, to our computer. Okay. So what I'm going to do is, is go ahead and first of all, uh, just plug in my power cord to my USB uh, power supply. And then go ahead and plug this one into a power outlet. Okay. And now I'm powering, when I plug this in here, I'm powering the transistor heaters. Okay. But now there's no, there are no commands. So the other thing I need to do is take um, my USB connection and plug that one into my computer. Okay, so now we're set up. We've got this, and I'm going to plug this end into my computer. Don't plug this one into your um, power supply. Okay, this one goes into your computer. This one's the communication cable. Okay, so um, I'm going to do that and then just start running this, and then we'll see how well uh, this one is going to fit uh, the data. Okay, we're going to have a real-time running plot here. Okay, so I'm going to open this one up in, um, I'll just do this one in MATLAB. And, but you can do it with Python or Simulink um, as well. Okay. Looks like Python's taking a little bit, or uh, MATLAB's taking a little bit of time to open. I'll just switch over to um, you can also switch over to Python here. I'll just show you the code for that. Um, 
you know, they should do about the same thing. Okay, so uh, you need, do need to pip install uh, TC Lab. If you don't have that, uh, just come to a command prompt, uh, for example, and then here uh, from the command prompt, you can type, um, you know, pip install uh, TC Lab and enter. Now this, I already have it, uh, but if you don't have it, then it will go out and install it for you. Okay, so that's the one thing you do need with this um, if you're running it in Python. And then I'll show you how to run it in MATLAB next. Um, okay, let me go ahead and close that. Okay, and I'll run this uh, module and then we'll see it uh, start tracking. Okay, so these are our two energy balance equations that we've set up with the exchange between the two. And we'll see this start to animate. You'll see, you know, it, it print out there on the left and we're solving it uh, real time. We're going to have the heater turn on now. So you can see that Q1 turned on to 100%. And you see that, uh, you know, there's some fluctuations in the uh, temperature measurement there, a little bit of noise. Uh, that's okay. Uh, you can see that the energy balance air is increasing. Okay, and uh, it's going up, uh, but the the lab is starting to heat up now. Uh, you can see that the you know the temperature effect uh, from the uh, the heater turning on, uh, but it's not quite keeping up with the uh, the energy balance. Uh, you know the the you know the energy balance is is lower or higher than the actual measured value. Okay. Uh, you can see that temperature 2 is doing a little bit better with the modeling. Um, okay, and it's just going to track along like this. Okay, so I'm going to show, uh, you'll, you can run the rest of this. I'm just going to close this down and run it in MATLAB now. And then show you the Simulink as well. Okay, so MATLAB, go ahead and open up that editor. And then when you run it, uh, one of the things it's going to do is if it's switching over from Python over to MATLAB, it's going to ask you uh, for what port you're on. So it can download the, uh, the necessary packages onto that device. So what I'm going to do here is just go ahead and type uh, device uh, manager. Okay, and open that up. Okay, let me see if the device manager is open. And I'll just see that I'm on COM4. Okay, so right here from the prompt that it asked me, I'm just going to have to type now COM4. Uh, COM and enter. And then it's going to recognize that device, download the MATLAB drivers, and, and then uh, go ahead and run this lab with... Uh, you know with MATLAB. Sometimes that takes a minute just to run but if you do it once um, then it's uh, it's done. It's going to update the uh, you know it's updating the server code on the UNO board and it says it might take a minute or two or a few um, so it's going to run uh, once it's done doing that. Now again there's also the Simulink version that's available. I'll just go ahead and just highlight that just as we're waiting for this to download. I've included a couple earlier versions. Okay, the R2016A, 2014A. This one is saved with R2017B. Uh, so if you have an earlier version, you may have to start with an earlier uh, Simulink model. I don't think uh, R2014A or earlier will work be just because the Arduino support package uh, for MATLAB changed drastically. There's a lot of differences there. So you might have to have a different, uh, you might have to upgrade your MATLAB version to 2015 plus. Okay, but some of those are included there as well if you're interested. Okay, so let's just see how this is doing. It looks like it's still updating, um, you know, the firmware on the Arduino device from MATLAB. Okay, and um, you know, just if you don't have the Arduino support package, 
you can go to add-ons and uh, get it. You know, you can um, you know manage your add-ons and get the Arduino support package. Okay, and then once it's running, you should see uh, something like this. We did have uh, you know temperature one uh, was a little bit higher right now because we already had the you know the Python uh, heating it. Uh, for a little bit, but we're going to run this one in conjunction with our model. And uh, looks like I've got a little bit of static in this room. I'm on uh, carpet right now, so uh, sometimes you got to remove some of the static or you get more uh, noise in your temperature sensor. So you can see that happened uh, there. But um, okay, but it's going to run and track the energy balance models, the two heater model against the data. And then we'll be able to compare, uh, you know, be able to compare the uh, two. Okay. So in the next exercise, what we're going to do, um, I'll go ahead and minimize this and just describe this. Uh, in the next exercise, uh, we're going to actually use parameter estimation uh, to fit those parameters and minimize the error between the model and the measured values. Okay, so that's it for uh, this one. I'll go ahead and um, post this video online just as a help for you.